what, what I majored in biology, I failed twice in high school. <laughs> so um, I, I came a long way from them. Um, I, it was, I had a single mom household. I had three brothers and sisters. So resources were definitely thin, but education was a, a top priority for us. Um, and the, I, I, I had an idea of going to college, but I didn't have that you know, in my heart, passion is where I'm going to be. It was, I graduated in 2008, um, summer 2008, the economy uh, crashed. There weren't many jobs out there. Um, RCC sent me an email saying, hey, you remember that uh, placement, cl the placement test you took in high school? Well, it's still good. And hopped on the bus, went to RCC. And, um, you know, I had to get up at five to catch the bus at six, get to school at seven for class at eight. <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely, you know, a rough start, but uh, once I got in there, I just loved learning experience. I had a lot of great mentors at RCC, uh, transferred to Cal State San Bernardino. And around that time is when um, my son was born in 2014, but I was born in 2015. And uh, 2016, 17, I was um, a single parent around that time and I had these two kids and I had a lot of family support, thankfully. But uh, it took a lot of work to uh, finish my graduation at San Bernardino um, with, you know, kids, school and work and all that. Um, and once I graduated, I was like, I'm done. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I just want to go out there. And um, that's when um, I heard about Project Impact in an email. And I went to the meeting and, I, and um, it just all made sense to me. I was like, you know what? It, it, it's going to be supportive. It's going to help me um actually accomplish this goal I have to become a teacher so I might as well go for it and push my best foot forward and um yeah and here I am today wrapping up my teaching credential I have to be my cousin uh Shantia who actually went to Cal State San Bernardino also um man when I was young she was just always the smart one and I really looked up to that and, and and she let everybody know that I'm not the smart one I'm just the one who tried to do it and they're really like okay well if she could do it I could do it too and she made that known and um it just allowed me to really look up to her as she graduated um associate's degree and, and seeing her um walk for her bachelor's degree and seeing her get her master's degree it just was really inspirational it just made it see like something that I, I don't see anywhere else, but in my own family, you know, just, just a strong connection. And um, she didn't directly encourage me, but just seeing her do it was um, amazing to me. So I, I think the biggest challenge is just them being heard and getting the help they need. Um, schools often supply them with, well, actually, there's a story I heard a while ago of this company who had a lot of money and they wanted to help out the help out this community who wasn't doing so good. So they went into that community and they built a beautiful school with laptops and tablets and all this technology. And um, we went to a conference and, you know, thanking the community and saying, we want to help you out. The student stood up and said, are you guys giving us food today? Like that was the, yeah, that was the need. Like, what about food? So a lot of times um, you don't get to know the student. You have to know the student so you can know how to help them. Otherwise, you like in that situation, they spent a billion dollars and the kids just needed the food. It's hard to learn when you're hungry. So I think that's um, a big struggle is letting the students being heard and knowing how to help them, how to assist them. When the door closes, when class ends, um in that when, when class is over when students need you the most um the content is very important I mean, we could teach the content but um what are you doing outside of that what kind of connection are you making with the students um so no students um it, from when they used to work at the, at the school program um a lot of students would you know that smart kids really smart kids that would impress me and they'll be in um these programs are these different programs. Well, wow, you guys are really smart, yet, you know, you guys aren't performing well in school. Because when I talk to you about something, you know it. You know, how, I remember I had, I had a fourth grader who was doing algebra. It was just a college algebra, my algebra, because <laughs> I was in college. And he was, he understood it. And I was like, 
well, wh why aren't you good at math? And, she, and he's like, well, he gives me a worksheet and I don't like doing worksheets. And it's like, oh, well, that's pretty, that, that's not a good reason, you know? So it's just having that connection with the kid, being adaptable, being able to help the students out. Um, I think if you just get the students a voice and listen to the voice and give them what they're saying they need, um, you, you could turn it all around for them. Honestly, I just, th there wasn't another way for me to become a teacher. Um, I, I've been to the orientations and the presentations of how to become a teacher. And it just seemed like so much to do, like so much to do, so much time. And then they said I had to um, work for free for six months. I, I have two kids. I can't tell them not to eat for two months. You know, I can't tell them, you know, you can't have toys for two months. So it was like, I, I, I just can't do it yet, at least yet. I'll have to wait. I'll be more, you know, build up some money, save up some money. Um, Project Impact, uh, not that they... Uh, solved every problem but they broke it down to me so i could understand what i really had to do to become a teacher i said no you, there's things you could do like you, you'll be a student at that time so you could still get aid money and um connecting me with men so i was like no this the tpa sounds mean big and scary but you're going to take a class we're going to walk you through it so just just giving me that guidance and almost giving me that confidence of okay this is something i could do this isn't as big bad and scary as i thought it seems doable and then um, I think the best feature that they provide is just connecting me with um, minority men from across the county and hearing them talk and say, hey, when I, when, when I was doing this, it was a lot of work and I'm here to support you and help you. And seeing um, superintendents, I, they're busy people, superintendents taking the time out just to say, hey, this is how you do good in an interview. I mean, it's, it means the world to me because that's them personally saying, I care and I want you guys to do well. So that um, those two things, I think, um, if, 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 if I didn't know that before going into the program, which I didn't, um, I'll say it's the biggest feature that they offer, just having that connection with the different school districts. gonna say is Dr. Sambera um, above and beyond to make sure and I, I'm, I'm very mentality of like you can make all the excuses you want and I listen to it but in the day, at the end of the day um, job needs to get done that's the kind of person she is just the job needs to get done and um, I'll come to her problems and email and I'll call her like hey I don't know what to do in this situation I don't know where I don't even know where I'm at in this situation it's just like all right Give me five minutes and you know she'll call me back you're here you're this you're there now go do the work and i'll go do the work so just having that guidance and having her just just know she has my back if i had a problem she had my back um every step of the way so her um uh, amazing and she's definitely the biggest impact i had in the program So what motivates me personally and academically? Just to just to make a difference and help. Um, like I said, I, I didn't come from the best situation. And um, and I felt like that out the out almost that was like held against me. Um, and to make a difference, just a small difference. I had a student that all I said was you know you're smart, right? Biology, you, you don't understand biology. It's tough, you don't get the science. That doesn't mean you're not smart. You know you're smart, right? And he was like, you know what? I do feel smart, but I keep going this class. And I was like, um, well, listen, you are smart. What are you doing smart things? Are you studying? Are you practicing? Are you going to class? He's like, you know, Mr. Grant, I'm not. And I was like, well, you're too smart to not be doing that. And flipped his grade around. And the, I remember the uh, his counselor, um or he told me that yeah it's, you know my counselor is really happy for me it's like i'm doing good in class and, that, and now and now my counselor wants to like help me more and I was like, that's because you're showing effort you have to show that effort so um 
just helping me. And I've been, when I was at the school program, uh, working with elementary school kids, um, just, you know, just making their day, just little things to make their day, make them change how they feel about themselves. And um, I ran into one of them, this was in 2016, 15, I was doing it. And a lot of my students are graduating now. And uh, I ran into one of my students in, in, in the Walmart and um, they didn't recognize her, but she recognized me. Um, so, hey, Mr. Grant, I'm doing good. Like, I'm going to college. Like, I'm really happy for it. And I please thank you for encouraging me. This is like seven years ago. And I'm like, wow, I'm happy that stuck with you. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really heartwarming to know, like, well, I, I, co I connected with her. And for me to connect with one, I'm overly joyed. If I connect with two, then I'm, well, I lost a word. I'm, you know, two of them came up to me, I would tear up. <laughs> so I'm, uh, that, that's what, where my passion is and my goal is just to help make a difference because uh, at the end of the day, we help them. They are the future. Um, it's going to help all of us. And we right now we need their help more than anything. When I get back into the classroom, my short-term goal will be to get that clear credential and just to keep improving and increasing my teaching ability. Um, I wanna make sure I have that strong, solid foundation. I wanna be a sponge. I wanna learn and absorb everything I can um, as I slowly implement um, things I wanna do slowly, um, excuse me, slowly, um, improve my ability so I can help my students. But I understand that um, I need to get those skills down first. Um, my long-term goal when back in the classroom will be to provide that environment of equity and to support not only the classroom, but support the community and uh, outreach to um, just to really create a culture and an environment where kids know they could be successful in, in the classroom. I would say one is just the networking abilities, um, connecting with people, not just in San Bernardino, Riverside, um, San Diego, um, like Elson or LA, the, the, the connections they had. Um, I got sent to a conference in Cal State Long Beach. Um, just just the, the connections they have there to um, make sure I know everything it's not you know you're in San Bernardino and that's it you know they they they're they're happy that you do better they don't care if you you know say in San Bernardino they say no you do better we want you to be successful and I love that and um the other one is is the dean he he surprised me too um I've never had a dean that I could just drop by and say hi to <laughs> he's always available he's passionate and he lets me know he's passionate and if I if I had a question and you know, I really need to talk to him they'll take the time out of, of, of the day to do that. And that's very, very rare. So that definitely surprised me. I'll say if, 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 you're pa if that's where your passion is, then um, you need to go for it. Um, like I said, it looks mean and scary. <laughs> it looks like a lot of work and, uh, and it is work, it is work. Um, but if you have that passion, that passion being if, if it makes your day to know you change the life or it makes your day to know you just help somebody and assist them along the way, then um, you definitely wanna be a part of the program. Um, Project Impact gives you all the tools you need. They're there with you, they're walking with you. You're not alone trying to figure it out by yourself. And, um, even outside of Project Impact, I met a lot of staff members and professors who helped me and connected me and just gave me advice down, down the line and down my journey to become a, um, a credential teacher. So if, if, it's, if it's where your passion is and you wanna do it, then there's no better place than here to do it. It, it, it's just having that role model. Um, there's not 
positive images of men out there, especially men of color already out there. And um, students need to be able to see that um, it's something similar to, to my cousin. It's something I could achieve. Um, if you're in a classroom and you don't feel like you're representative or you don't feel like that's something I could do and you have all these other images saying, well, do this instead and those things aren't favorable to you know, themselves or their health or their situation, then um, they're not gonna aspire to be it. And um, another biggest thing is just relatability. Relatability, I know what you've been through. I know the pain you've been through. I understand how you feel about this situation. Um, a lot of you to so just connect with them on a different level. Ooh.